will show you how to use all those uh, cane scraps, you know, all that clay that pushes out on the ends whenever you're reducing something to make nice ba backings for your bracelets. I always do them and I store them between uh, sheets of paper wax as I have the template and I know about what size I want. And then whenever I make a bracelet that the colors kind of match with any of these backings, then I will use the backing. And I would place first the backing and then the front of the bracelet on top. So what I do, I might add uh, one or two more colors to the mix, depending on what colors I have there. Here, for example, I had a whole bunch of metallic um, and um, pearl white, and I added some translucent and some bronze. And then what you do, you just chop everything uh, relatively fine. The look generally, of, of course, it depends on the colors you have there. But generally, the look uh, is that of, you know, those exceptionally expensive marble countertops. That's pretty much how it looks like. And especially if we are talking about a pearlescent or a metallic, uh, that's even more awesome. Whenever I have regular colors, I just, the colors that I add would be some pearlescent or metallic exactly for this purpose. So once I do chop all my uh, scraps, I will put them on a piece of uh, paper wax, a uh, wax paper, duh. And see, for example, here I just realized that I actually have enough to do two of them. Because you want to do them about the thickness of your thickest setting on the pasta machine. So I am going to move on another sheet of paper, half of this uh, pile and do it after I finish the tutorial but I get my template to have it as a point of reference and then I start kind of clumping together all those uh, little chopped up pieces <coughs> and uh, to about the width that I need of course it's going to be way taller at this point, I'm not worrying much about the edges. I just make sure that they are all um, kind of sticking to each other. Then I will cover with uh, another uh, sheet of wax paper. Make sure that I have at least six inches in length. And then using my fingers, I press everything together. And then I remove the wax paper and work a little bit on the edges. After which I replace the wax paper and start working on it with the roller. Uh, very careful from time to time you need to uh, remove the wax paper to release the uh, clay because the clay is stuck to the paper. And if you don't release it, I will show you in a minute, it will buckle. And you don't want that to happen. Uh, I will show you in a minute what happens if you keep going with the roller without uh, releasing uh, the sheet of wax paper from time to time. So see, I am going like this and see what happened. It buckles. So you need, number one, to uh, remove the uh, sheet of wax paper from time to time and then don't go very strong. It's better to go uh, several more times with, the less, uh, with less pressure on it. And I go on the width at this point more because as soon as I get it to... A thickness close to the thickest setting on the pasta machine I will get it through the pasta machine but right now I'm working on the width and on the edges yes my phone is ringing it can ring so as you can see uh, I'm going again very slightly I'm measuring it against the template uh, then I will be cutting and uh, whatever, see how there are a few spots where it's not wide enough, but because I just have little crumbs and chunks, I take the uh, ones that I cut and I cram them in those little spots where um, it seems to be missing. 
after which I will do uh, again another pass once I make sure that the width is uh, close to what I need and I do another pass with the roller on it, after which, because it got uh, the proper thickness, I will take it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. And then I get my backing ready for whenever I will need it. And now let's see how to use it. this cane that I never managed to reduce more it's a triquetra with the circle so I guess I'll just use it to make a bracelet so I have a sheet of translucent clay that I went through the pasta machine with it uh, on the thinnest setting and I cut it with a template and uh, I sliced my cane and I will be placing the slices uh, trying to get the slices that are all uh, pretty much on the same thickness and I will arrange them uh, like in a puzzle the triangle like in a puzzle on the uh, template until I can fill uh, the whole template uh, I like to place this cane on translucent because it gives a stone-like appearance when it is baked. Uh, of course, sometimes I uh, place it on black and it looks beautiful on black and it also looks beautiful on white, especially on uh, pearl white. So, uh, once I place most of my uh, slices, I will try and see if that's enough or if I need to add more. But uh, always when placing slices of cane, try and make sure that uh, you don't have distance between the slices, that they get uh, well, uh, not overlapping, but edge to edge. So, I definitely need one more slice on each side and of course when you place the slices make sure that you don't trap um, air bubbles but uh, this cane has been in the drawer for at least two months so it is fairly not prone to buckling to trap air bubbles so first of all I will burnish with the roller because uh, that way uh, you get the least of deformation of the slices if by chance you did not uh, cut the slices close to equal which sometimes it can be a challenge I just had a good day and also the cane was rested so it wasn't very hard to slice it and then once I get my uh, the front of the bracelet done, I will uh, get the backing that I have just prepared. And as I said, I have always several of these in a drawer. And uh, if kept between um, uh, wax paper sheets, they will not dry out. Uh, you only need to fold the edges. I usually fold the edges uh, to overlap and then I place a little bit of tape to keep them folded and that way uh, the wax paper will keep the oils inside and your uh, sheet will stay as supple as if you just made it. So once I place my uh, piece on the easy cuffs, I will then do exactly what you have been seen me doing with easy cuffs all the time and that is I will first um, do the self trimming that easy cuffs is so easy to do just by rolling with the roller against the um, um, metallic edge while you are um, doing a nice and rounded uh, edge for your cuff 
and then once that is done I will place the front of the bracelet uh, with great care not to trap air bubbles again especially because we are talking about a translucent so uh, it's already rainy here so I expect to get some plaquing but I would rather not have a lot of it so once you make sure that you have no trapped air bubbles uh, trim the excess and then do again the same thing with the roller of round the edges of the cuff and then uh, once they are nice and rounded then swipe with the roller against the metallic edges of the easy cuffs and I did a review on the easy cuffs you can look in the list of my videos if you want uh, I will put a, a link to where you can get these easy cuffs which is much better than any other uh, metal um, cuff to use for this uh, purpose that I've ever used and I show that in my review uh, I am using my faithful pen paintbrush because uh, the cane was in the drawer for so long I don't want uh, to have any kind of cracks and also I want to gently bring the uh, front over the uh, backing so uh, I will have a nice and uh, same color on the edge without the backing showing on the side of the cuff and again before everything make sure that it is nice and straight and nicely rounded then I take two jump rings these ones don't happen to have any opening but if you use jump rings with openings make sure that the opening is inside the clay then using my exacto knife I cut a slit uh, pretty much at the middle of the um, sheet of polymer clay I insert the jump ring half in the clay and then I blend back the slit that I had cut and I do the same on both ends of the cuff of course you can place a bale or whatever else but I find that with translucent the jump rings show the least and I do like uh, jump rings instead of uh, spoon bales as a general idea so uh, once I do this my uh, cuff is ready to be baked and uh, I will not I do a very slight sanding on it because you didn't really need to uh, I made it very nice and smooth uh, and I varnished it with water-based minwax and then I will show you how to uh, place the fastening, fastenings. As you can see, it has a very nice stone look. And the backing also has a marble look. And it's kind of hard to see, but it has a lot of opalescence because of all the pearlescent and metallics that are in it. I'm going to use a very nice and thin and delicate um, a silver uh, chain because generally with this type of uh, cane slices uh, that look very delicate I like to use a delicate chain for the fastening I'm measuring um, how much chain I will need and then I will cut the piece that I need and see how much better it is with this new swivel arm for my camera thank you for Delphine who is my sponsor and who purchased it for me from my Amazon wish list this is why I don't go off camera lately because of this new arm I don't have that humongous magnifying glass between me and the camera anymore so you can see very well what I am doing now uh, so I am taking um, the piece of um, chain and using a jump ring I attach first uh, I'm using a ma magnetic clasp and I attach first the magnetic clasp and then I will attach the chain to itself 
I always suggest uh, when using jump rings, even if they look very, very strong and secure, still put just a droplet of uh, jewelry glue. Um, it seems very expensive because it's like $10 for an itty bitty bottle, but believe me, I usually use a bottle for like two years because you only need a drop here and there. Uh, then on the second uh, piece of chain, I will leave it a little bit longer because I want to attach a little um, charm that is actually a little heart with a Celtic knot on it. And I think that it is very uh, fit for this um, bracelet, of course. And um, once I cut my piece of um, chain, I make another jump ring. I have no idea what I did with my spool of 20 gauge wire, so I'm just using a, a pin to make jump rings. And then I attach first the little heart charm. And then using a second jump ring, I attach the um, a chain to itself and to the other side of the bale. The clasp. That's not a bale. That's a magnetic clasp. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, of course, I will place, I just didn't want to because normally you're not supposed to move the piece of jewelry if you apply jewelry glue for a period of time. So I will apply that after I finish the tutorial. But there you go. This is how to make a nice piece of jewelry with a nice backing. Happy claying!